Number one. When I was 12, and I had newly found out I was bi, as I didn't know I was trans, and I didn't know about trans people, so I didn't know about pansexuality. So I know this isn't as creepy as other stories, and it was only two years ago on Whisper. So I put up a post saying, I recently found out I was bi, and wanted to tell people, as I was shy in real life, and was being bullied, so I was easily manipulated and trusting as I had no friends and I was lonely. I was female at the time. Someone messaged me and said that she was bi too. I was overjoyed because she was the first person who talked to me and knew about being bi. She asked me things like do you like girls or boys more? I said girls and she replied with a picture of her. I had already sent her a picture of me because I thought she was nice. She quickly turned the conversation a sexual way. I was young and I felt nice having some attention as I was lonely. After a while, she introduced me to her friend. She said she was 15 and he helped her to do homework as she told her parents. She said to me that I had sex and if I came over to the country, they would love to have sex with me. She would beg me for nudes and I only give one as I was easily persuaded and after that one I felt creeped out. I deleted that app as I wanted a game on my phone so I have no proof of the messages. Later on I realised there was no girl, just a creepy guy that would rape me if I went to meet that person and I have no idea what would have happened after he raped me as I was young and I didn't know about paedophiles at that time. Number 2 Although I don't remember everything that happened in my childhood, this one experience still lingers in my mind, mainly because I reacted a little stupidly. I was about the age of 9, although I'm not too sure about that. During the summertime, I would spend time at my grandparents. That past Christmas, my grandfather died, so my grandmother was all alone. So when I visit, I would sleep in her bed with her, as she wasn't used to sleeping alone yet. Sometime that summer, we watched the news of a man that broke out of some prison, and he was apparently hopping trains. I remember it scared us a little, as my grandmother lived close enough to the tracks that objects in the house would shake when the train passed by. Late one night, I woke up for some reason. My grandmother's room was on the first floor, so I easily heard the door handle on the back door jiggle. Overlooking the backyard is a big window, which is up a few stairs from the back door, so I was able to look down to see who was jingling the handle. A man with a red baseball cap was staring at the door jiggling that handle. Here's the stupid part. Me being me, I look at him for a while, then I slowly back away and head back to bed. Nothing happened after that. Nothing was taken from the unlocked garage. The garage was not connected to the house. No windows broken, back door still locked. So I'm assuming that the guy saw me and possibly freaked out. I did have long brown hair and a white nightgown on at the time. Here's hoping that I did freaking white. That would be so cool. I don't know if it was the guy that broke out of prison, or if it was some weirdo travelling through the small town, or even a neighbour. I do know that the guy trying to break in was of Mexican ethnicity, and the guy that broke out of prison was a Mexican. So that's my story. Not as scary as some people's, but it does make you wonder. Update. I'm 25 now, and I told my grandmother the story a few months ago. Completely forgot about the incident until I read some stories on the No Sleep Reddit. Number 3. Let me start by saying that I'm usually a cautious person. I am female, and this happened a few years ago. 
I was in Osaska starting a new job. I decided to go out on town with new friends. It turned into a bit of a bar hopping, something I don't normally do, but the few drinks I have made me less curious. Dumb. We ended up at a club. Dancing until late, I was ready to go to the hotel, but no one else was. No worries. I was sure I would walk back easily. That's when he appeared. A Japanese man about my age. In broken English, he offered me a ride. Even drunk, I said no, but he followed me. I ducked into a convenience store, but he follows. Somehow, I end up in his car. No idea how. I tell him where I am going. Not the hotel, but the station nearby. I black out and work in a warehouse district. I point out his GPS clearly showing that we were going the wrong way and tell him to turn around. But he pulls over. He says he wants to talk. Not playing. I tell him to back the fuck off. He insisted on talking. Noticing the doors were locked and not wanting to wait for him to make a move, I slammed my elbow into his mouth, reached across his body, unlocked the door and threw myself out of the car. I ignored the cries of pain, asking why and that I had hurt him, and legged it. I ran, off the path behind the bushes, staying in the shadows. The warehouse district was empty, but I saw a light ahead, and hoped the parking garage had a guard who could help me. Instead, I stumbled upon an off-duty cab driver, who and threw myself in his cab. Long story short, what would have been a 5 minute cab if from the club turned into a 40 minute $50 cab ride? Creepy kidnapper? Almost rapist? Let's never meet again. Number 4 This happened about a month ago and at the time I wasn't scared. However, I look back on it now and I don't want to think about what could have happened. Now let's get to the story. My sister and I were going to my girlfriend's house. My girlfriend had done something to her left foot and I just wanted to see her. We stared at her for about three hours. We helped her out for the first hour and a half and the rest of the time my girlfriend and I cuddled watching TV. Why my sister spent most of that time talking to her mother by the time my sister and I left, it was pitch black outside. We got a third of the way home and a car started to tailgate us. The car would flash its brights on and off, while about 10 feet behind my car. At this point, my sister was freaking out. We both are strong for our size and body types. Plus, we both are able to hold our own in a fight. So in case something happens, we could fight. By two thirds of the way home, we called my dad and told him what was going on. He said he was going to meet us outside of the apartment. We were just outside for the town and the car passed us. I could only make out the colour. It was black. We got home, told our dad the car passed us and I fell asleep in my bed. Two weeks later, I found that someone was pushed off the road a county over later that night. I heard that the person got sent to hospital. No one was around to see it, but the police said to find black paint on the bumper of the car. I think it was the car that tailgated us. To the person are people in the black car. Let's never meet, because I have no idea what's going to happen if we do. Number five. I worked at Walmart so it was not unusual to encounter some odd people. This story takes place almost two years ago. I lived in a small town in Canada with a Walmart super centre. This wasn't my first job, but it was my first job that I considered to be a big deal. I took the cashier position that was available and quickly got to know everyone, and I was overall very friendly and helpful. I like to think so at least. I had regular customers and for the most part, it was a great place to work. 
until I met John. I won't use John's real name as other people who have had experience with him claim him to be harmless, but I'm not so sure. John was around 60 years old, balding, overweight, and in the construction business still. He came through my till and was very polite. He said he knew everyone in the store and loved to feel like part of our family. It was kind of weird at me out. He looked at me and said, Whoa, you are just beautiful. I know I'm old and you're young, but I would chase you down in a heartbeat. I laughed awkwardly as I thought he was kidding, but from that day on, at least three days a week, he would come to my till and buy something small or random just to talk. He would grab my hand and tell me how special I was, or how he felt lucky to be in my presence, asking if I had a boyfriend or what kind of guys I was into. He told me he would fend off boys who came near me because I was a queen and he wanted to protect me. He never failed to make me want to crawl out of my skin. He would come up to me as if he had planned the moment. No one would be around. The store was dead. He would take the advantage to tell me all his inner thoughts about me. He would also keep candy, Hershey's kisses in his pockets and say, Wanna kiss, darling? This kind of stuff was not appropriate, so I told my manager and she told security he then found him wandering the store and told him to lay off on the comments to the front end staff. I was hoping this would resolve my issue, but it made him even creepier. He would wait for me to go on breaks so he could talk. He would yell, Hey sweetie, you're looking so adorable today, while I was busy with customers. Then he would proceed to stare at me and smile with his lip curled almost in an evil way. This may all sound harmless, but when you're at work and some guy spends his day there and does this, it's just too much. Anyways. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment below. All feedback, good or otherwise, is always appreciated. If you have any creepy stories of your own or have any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. Make sure you check out the Halloween special collaboration video that I did with Tales of Tim. He makes some amazing videos. I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can check it out. I would also like to do a quick shout out to Creepy Battenberg. He started out just a little bit before I did. So make sure you show him some support by checking out his channel and subscribing. I will leave a link to his channel in the description below so you can check him out. Until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe and I'll see you next video.